Uh, yes, I do. Uh, Mitchell Johnson will be 12th man tomorrow. Um, yeah, so exciting for the boys, a new series for us. We're playing um, against a good Sri Lankan team who know the conditions pretty well, know Australia quite well. A lot of the guys, a lot of the Sri Lankan players have a lot of experience. So uh, our preparation has been outstanding over the last few days. Uh, obviously a tough selection, um, trying to cut 12 down to 11, especially with the way uh, Mitchell Johnson performed in Perth. But for this test match, this is the 11 we've, uh, we've selected. Uh, there was no talk about that in regards to selection for this test match, no. Not over, not since being in Hobart, that's for sure. Uh, had no impact whatsoever. Yeah, Mitch should feel unlucky, there's no doubt about it. I think, um, like I said in Perth, uh, Sids and Hilf were uh, unfit. Both weren't 100% fit for that test match, so they missed that game. Um, and then, you know, Mitchell Starks, I guess, been in, in the queue for a while now, and I thought he came in and did a really good job in Perth as well. So, But in saying that, Mitchell bowled very well, Mitchell Johnson bowled very well in um, in Perth, uh, and like, yeah, he is unlucky to miss out. But it's you know we've we've gone for for this ad attack for this Test match um, in these conditions against the opposition we're playing. So what was it specifically that swung start here? I'm assuming it was the choice start here. Um, yeah, it probably wasn't um, as simple a choice as that. Uh, like I say, I think Sids and Hill have come back into the team, being um, two guys that have performed very well over the past 12 months for us, both being 100% fit. Um, and then, like I say, Starkey's been in the queue for, for a long time, or well, the last you know 8 to 12 months, and we thought he bowled really well in um, in the Test match in Perth, as well did Mitchell Johnson. So, yeah, it, it certain, certainly wasn't a, a simple decision. Um, all four guys have performed really well. Um, Mitch Johnson's been bowling beautifully for Western Australia as well, but you know this is the 11 we're going for for this Test match. Jess, well, Mitch has sometimes struggled with self-confidence in the past. Did you at all factor in that you know you brought him back? He's actually bowled pretty well, and then the effect actually pull, pulling him out of the team might actually have him from there. Look, at the end of the day, you got to do what's best for the Australian team. You got to pick the best 11 players to help you win a Test match, and for this Test, that's the 11 we're going for. Um, you know, like I said, it, it certainly. Uh, it was a t tough selection to, to, to leave Mitchell Johnson out, as it would have been whoever we left out. But uh, I've been saying for a while, it's, it's a nice problem to have when you've got 12 blokes that really want to play and have performed well. Um, but unfortunately, someone has to miss out. So, yeah, look, Mitch will be fine. He'll, um, he'll continue to work his backside off and, um, I guess, wait for another opportunity and, and try and grab it with both hands once again. Pete, uh, is there a sense with Mitchell's start that you sort of giving him a run? For me, I'm not, I'm not looking at the Ashes at all. For me, like I say, the, the reason Mitchell Stark's there is because he's been in the queue for a while. He's been next in line in the queue for a while. Um, he's performed really well um, in the shorter form of the game for Australia. He got one test in Perth and got six for and 70-odd with the bat as well, so that's not a bad start either. So uh, I think whoever we left out in this test match, it was always a topic of conversation. We're always going to ask the question, why would you leave him out? And it was always going to be a tough selection. So, um, yeah, oh, there's no doubt, though, that um, John Inverarity, Mickey Arthur and Pat Howard are, need to continue to look um, to India and then to the Ashes. Um, but for me as a player, as I've said before, and for the rest of the team, we're focused on this test match and the opposition we're playing against tomorrow. Well, with the, um, the composition of the batting order, did you think about moving up to three or four? Do you think playing the status quo? Uh, I, I certainly thought about it. Um, I thought long and hard about it. Uh, but at this stage, I guess Mickey Arthur and myself feel that um, how the order is for this test match with Husey at three, Watto at four, Myself stay at five and, and Michael Hussey at six is our best lineup um, to have success in, in this test match and hopefully for the series. Um, but yeah, there's no doubt I, I thought long and hard about it. I, I've said, I guess as a, as a young player, you know, I batted number four for New South Wales my whole career and, um, you know, I always as a kid wanted to bat number four for Australia. I guess the older you get and the wiser you get, you work out and realise that the number's irrelevant where you bat. It's about having success and helping the team win. Um, and that's probably where I sit now with my game. I'm, 
You know, if I bat three or four or five, it, it doesn't bother me. Um, the, the, the strength and the advantage that we have in our top four now is that all four of the Australian top four have opened the batting for Australia. So against the new ball, they'll be um, very well suited. Uh, and, and an area of our game, the Australian team, since I've been a part of the Australian team, that we continue to work on is playing spin. And I think that's probably going to be our, our greatest test um, not only through this series, because Sri Lanka got some really good spinners, but also looking forward to India. Uh, so that's an area you'll see the boys, you know, continue to work on at training. Um, but I do believe if we um, if we lose early wickets, we're we're very capable against the new ball, which is a real positive. Dan, Michael, uh, we saw you take the, um, the top three guys aside at training yesterday. What have you emphasised to, to those guys as a, as a unit, particularly, I guess, given that you've been three out for not many? Uh, just to back themselves and play their way, you know. I think if you look at our top, our top three, they're all very different players. They all have great strengths, and they've all, you know, scored a hundred for Australia. Um, so there's plenty of talent there. Now it's just about owning your position, I guess, making the most of it, grabbing hold of this opportunity with both hands, and um, and they have a chance to to build a long, successful career. You know, whether um, whether it be opening the batting, batting three, batting four. I think you know all of our top four batters now have have seen a bit of success at this level. They're certainly good enough to be here, and now it's about grabbing hold of that chance. Andrew? Uh, Michael, you second goal at Tesco, not so much the first one, but after you came back to Bangladesh, I guess Phil's in a similar position here coming back for the third time. Do you just how different it was coming back after being dropped as opposed to getting a baby going for the first time? Well, at the time, it's the time you dropped is the most disappointing of your career, there's no doubt about it. For me, there was no worse, it was the worst feeling I've ever had playing cricket. You know, real, the realisation that I've all I ever wanted was to play cricket for Australia and to have that taken away from me because of my poor performances um, breaks your heart. But when I look back now on my career, I think it was the best thing that happened to me because it allowed me to go back to my state and, um, and work really hard on my game um, without the, the expectation and, and the consistent media, I guess, around me. Um, and then fortunately for me, I, yeah, I got a second chance. So I guess, it, if anything, it just gives you more hunger. It makes you realise how much you want to play cricket for Australia. Um, it makes you realise how tough the game is, that there's, there's ups and downs and you've got to work really hard to stay at the top um, consistently. And that's why I say that you know, a sign of a great player to me is longevity. And that's why I have the utmost respect for the guys that um, have played well and truly over 100 test matches because it means you've been a, a consistently um, very good player to be able to stay there for such a long period of time. I can't speak for Husey. Um, you know, he's playing very well, there's no doubt about it. He's always had talent. Um, you should ask Husey that question. Well, I think there's three tests in this series, so even if it doesn't have as much impact as um, both teams would probably like in, in, on, on this wicket, uh, it certainly will at the MCG and the SCG. Um, but if the rain stays away today, I think the wicket's going to be a pretty good batting wicket for the first few days, and then I think it might stay a little bit low um, and spin will certainly play a part there, that's for sure. I think the other thing, when you look at the Sri Lankan team, Harath has had a, a lot of success over the last 12 months, so he's a, he's a major factor in their team, and uh, I'm confident that he'll bowl a lot of overs throughout this series. Um, so we have to be ready and, and as well prepared as we possibly can to, to face plenty of spin, that's for sure. Uh, well, he's not playing in the test, so I don't have to worry about that, fortunately. Um, he bowled very well last night, that's for sure. I think they got a good pace attack. I think they got some really good options, right, left arm, um, swing bowling compared to some young quicks that bowl with good pace. So I think they got a pretty good attack, an underrated attack, um, especially coming and bowling in Australia, which conditions over the past couple of years especially have been conducive to, to fast bowling. Um, so yeah, look, we, we certainly aren't taking um, any one of their players for granted. We've, we've looked at a lot of footage yesterday. The boys have prepared really well over the last three days in the nets. 
And, you know, we know it's going to be a tough series. They've, any team with the likes of Jay Wardner and Sangakara, that sort of experience, that sort of class is going to be tough. So we know we have to be at our best. Do you think it's sad, though, that Melinda isn't playing as cricket and you retire so soon? I think it's the game now, isn't it? I think um, everybody's body's different. Everybody's in a different place. Uh, and I'd imagine, I've never bowled fast, but I'd imagine being a fast bowler, it's even harder on your body than, than being a spinner or being a batsman. So, look, he's, it, it's great that he's still playing. I think it's, he's, he's wonderful for the game. He's, his action's very different, and as you've seen with the, the Perth team yesterday, it takes a bit of time to, um, to get used to it, and I'm sure we'll see him playing the one days and the T20s. So, yeah, look, fortunately, like I say, he's one bowler I don't have to worry about through this Test Series. It's so hard, Pete, to get or to have the cake and eat it. That's 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 what we'd all love. But when do you put? You know, the Australian Test team's playing Test cricket twelve months of the year. You know, there's no real perfect time to to not be playing first class cricket. Or I think what we're doing really well, and Pat Howard deserves a lot of credit for this, is making sure the next group of players are still doing a lot of work against the Red Bull. Now we've got Test cricket not only through the Australian summer, but then we go to India. So the selectors would have, um, you know, we would, have, we would have put a list together of players that we want to um, make sure are still doing plenty of batting, plenty of bowling in preparation for Test cricket. And Paddy Howard takes care of that and makes sure the individual player knows that, um, yes, you're playing in the big bash, but you still need to make sure you're doing some extra work. So if you are caught up for Test cricket, you're ready to go. So, you know, I think we're, yeah, we've come a long way, that's for sure, in regards to making sure the, the next guy's who will be coming into the Australian team if there's an injury or, or somebody doesn't perform as well as they'd like, are as well prepared as they can be while they're playing Big Bash. Yeah, there's folks on the next tier down, like you and Tassie, who can't even play great cricket this weekend because that's called off to watch some tests. Yeah. And then they get a break for, you know, so they're missing a lot of cricket. Yeah, I probably experienced that when we played, when the Sixers played the, um, the Champions League this year. So leading up to the first test, I had to go back and play um, club cricket to get some sort of cricket and like I say there's there's no perfect world um, it's just about trying to make do and I think you know, we're, we're pretty lucky around Australia you've got really good trading facilities so worst case you can be I know it's not the same as playing in a game but you can be spending as much time in the nets as possible um, the other side of that sometimes it's good for your body to have a week or two weeks off to to freshen your, your mind and your body up to make sure you're ready to go once you know they get back into state cricket Uh, no, I didn't talk to him. Uh, I don't know if Mickey did. I think the one thing we have to understand with Davey is the same ball he got out on in Perth, we were all standing and clapping out Adelaide when it went over cover or went over slips for four. That's the way he plays. You know, the, the only thing I continue to say to Davey is make sure you've got that good intent. And the good intent, I mean more in his mind, more so than the actual shot, because when Davey's intense right, his defence is better, his attacking shots are better. Um, you know, he plays his best when he's looking to score runs. There's no doubt about it. And yes, we all have to work on shot selection at certain times in your innings. Um, but, you know, I think I think Davey, at the start, you know, the, for the start of his test career, three test hundreds I think he scored now, he's, he's doing pretty well. You know, I, I'd love to see him... Like all of us, we would love to be more consistent and score runs every time we walk out to bat. But I think there's got to be a bit of give and take with Davey as well because we know how he plays. Sometimes it's not going to look great when he gets out. But the other side, he's got that X factor. You know, he can take a test match away from any team in, you know, in, in the first session of a test match, really. There's not too many players in the world that, that have that talent. So at the moment, I'm, yeah, I'm really happy with how he's going. Um, he was disappointed with the way he got out. But, again, more than don't play the shot, it's keep working hard in the nets to execute that shot better. Yeah, yeah, and that's what you learn as a young player, don't you, that um, we've all made that... Well, we're all still making that mistake, unfortunately. Um, yeah, the, the shot... 
the conditions in Perth are different to Adelaide, as we're going to see here. You know, I think one of Davey's greatest innings was the 100 he scored here against New Zealand in really tough batting conditions. Um, but he still had that great intent on a wicket that was doing a lot. He was still looking to score runs, looking to play his shot, but his shot selection was spot on, was perfect that inning. So in a perfect world, you'd love to bottle that and say play like that every time you bat. But like I say, I think there's got to be a bit, bit, bit of give and take with Davey. Last question, Dan. Uh, Michael, how do you guard against, I suppose, the feeling that you played very well against South Africa, the number one team in the world? You're now playing a team that's outside most people expect you to, expect you to, to be quite comfortable with. How do you guard against just feeling, well, could we rock up and do something near what we did against South Africa and things will go okay here? Well, if you rock up and do what we did against South Africa, we won't be getting better. You know, so that's how you guard against that. Every day we get out of bed, we're trying to get better. You know, that conversation is had consistently around our group that the opposition is irrelevant in regards to how we judge ourselves as players. You know, you have to be getting better individually and as a team. So, you know, our goal is not to come out and play the same way against Sri Lanka as we did against South Africa. We have to learn from what just happened in the last series. Um, take the positives, which I thought there was a, a lot of positives out of that series and the areas where we need to get better we need to make sure in this series we are we are doing that. So I'm confident if we can um, improve on the series against South Africa, against Sri Lanka, we'll continue to have success.